to you? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with the question, if, if I get the question correctly. I think, I think soundtracks that are in other genres other than orchestral scores have been around a long time. Um, I was just listening to a Quincy Jones score the other day, which was like early, late 60s funk R&B that was just magnificent. Um, which was certainly long, in the 50s, I mean, Duke Ellington, I mean, it, it was the third man in, what, 1937? Yeah, he was afraid of the original wolf, but that stuff. There is this conception that, the, like I, I mentioned it, and I could be wrong, I still sort of cling to the conception that there, you know, John Williams is the master of the so-called film music genre, which is based on romantic orchestral writing of 1920, blah, 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 blah. You could make some case for that. Um, but I personally think any genre can be film music in the hands of the right person. You know, there's no reason that reggae can't express tragedy and triumph. I actually think there there was a bit of a resurgence of of romantic music and in actually the, the, the 50s and, and, and the 60s in that era it was a much more wider palette. I mean, there was a much wider palette to write from. There's the jazz influences, there's a lot more the completely modern synth influences, there's a lot of influences that were much more varied and in, in this day and age everything's much more like, okay, you have to write that big melody with the big thing because it's an adventure movie. And so it's got to have a big melody and sound like the 20s, or, you know. So. Do you think it'll turn out the other way? No. Well, I think so. Then it could, no? Because, I don't know. Well, I don't, I don't see the, the way because more, uh, younger is the people I meet, I meet uh, more they like orchestral things for some reason. Now the young, the youngest directors, the only thing in the scoring as an orchestral big thing and things like that. No? But I think everything has a cycle and it has to come the other thing also. No? The people get tired or something. No? The, we, uh, in the 80s, for instance, they used a lot the scene, the scenes in a very simple way, and then the reaction is this. No? And it will come the other thing. Frequently, all it takes is sort of one film that becomes very popular that has a very innovative or avant-garde score, and suddenly people begin to sort of look at things a little bit differently. Or even smaller films, like In the Bedroom came out recently, Thomas Newman did a very minimal, almost sound pastiche score. And in my mind, it was one of the most interesting things he'd ever done. But it's obviously radically different from the stuff that he's usually well known for. But if one of these films does become very popular, and suddenly everyone says, oh, there's a new movement, and suddenly you start copying for a little bit, and then it switches again. That's supervisor as well, music editors are there, editors are there frequently. You go through the entire film and you basically try to establish which moments mean what. Some projects, you have the composer in the room, I think that's probably an ideal. Would you guys agree that you want to be around for the music spotting session if you can? Well, that's part of our deal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's contractual. You You're not going to send one of your session. underlings in to <laughs> take notes. But it, it basically, it's usually a strategic decision that happens early on in the process, and then they kind of start working through the composer with their areas, supervisor might work with their areas, and then as the assembly comes together, sometimes the composer will say, you know, I'm not sure this is working for me, this scene feels off, can we see the supervisor might want to bring a source cue in, or maybe this, you know, the supervisor will find this song that works, but it's not great, and we can talk to the composer about seeing something that he can do here instead. So it's a collaborative process. Anybody want to touch upon that? Well, budgetary constraints also, of course, because they'll have some really expensive song, and, you know, at the end of, oh, we can't afford this, so do something there. You know. Can you do Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith, please? Yes. Thanks, this is really great talk. Uh, for aspiring young people, uh, what, do you have any thoughts or, or things come to mind in terms of uh, how people get into this? Stay, of stay out of the business. <laughs> Well, 
there's also, I mean, to me it's, it's by whatever method you need that period. You know, I had it on the film. Clint had it in, in Darren's kitchen. Um, on the film. <laughs> uh, we've all had our, our, our trial by fire by which you learn this craft and this art and, and the interaction of, you know, with the, t the team. So it's just a matter of getting that experience. However you can do that. Student films, you know, put your name on the bulletin board and the next, you know, Scorsese who's graduating from you know, the USC Film School will find you and the next thing you know you've got a career. And focus, good. you know, focus and believe. You know, it's that thing of just knowing that you're something. When I was 17, 18, 19, somebody say, what do you do? And I said, I'm a composer. I was like, I, I'm a composer. And so just believing that, just keeping that belief and just knowing that you're taking the right steps towards something, law of attraction and all that. And just never forget that if you're going to say you're a composer, well, what does a composer do? A composer composes. Right. So compose. Yeah, so make it doesn't music. really matter. Just keep and say yes. Else. Just say just yes. Make sure you're everything. composing. Make sure that you 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 write music. It's also good, I think, to look for people who are at the same level. So if you have somebody who's doing their first time score, look for a, a you know a like-minded person who's making their first film because in many ways their learning process and your learning process are going to be parallel. It can be very difficult to be working with a very accomplished director that you might really love their work, but it's your first time as opposed to just sort of working your way through because that trial by fire makes a huge difference in how much you grow. And I think you guys would probably all agree the first few films that you worked on were the biggest growth experiences of all, perhaps. So it's kind of an exciting time to look for people that are worthy of putting that energy and that time into because you're not going to make money and you're not going to be able to sort of you know feel like an expert at the end of the day. But that process of insecurity and building is really exciting and you grow a lot in that time period. And somebody said, you know, yeah, you always seem to be at the right place at the right time. And the guy goes, no, I'm just everywhere. <laughs> just, you know, be everywhere. Can I, can I just shoot really quick? We haven't talked about it, but there is a world-renowned program at USC, a film scoring program, that, you know, if your son or daughter has aspirations, and I believe you have to get your BA first, and then you spend a very intensive year training at SC, I go down and speak three, four times a year. Um, it's a very fantastic, it's a fantastic program. And they work with live orchestras once every month, I think. Um, you learn, you learn by doing, and you spot movies, and you have people come down and speak. So, if that's of interest, um, there are those kinds of places. UCLA has a program. SC is sort of recognized as one of the best. The only downside is that they train these wonderful composers every year. Very, I mean, I get demo tape. We all probably get CDs, uh, and it sounds wonderful most of the time. There just are so many jobs, so you Stay know, out. follow your dream. <laughs> As Mark saying, right? Who knows where it's all going to end up? And there are no, there's there are many paths to get in. But, but there are there are there in academia there are places to go. Yeah, and there are more, more films it's being a, made every year too. It's a, so it's a three percent ratio or something, right? That of workers, like the guys that work, is like three percent of the entire population. Of, yeah, of all. It's crazy. It's scary. Yeah, but keep in mind also that we're talking about sort of a, you know, it's a feeding pond, you know, and there's different layers of that feeding pond. And at the top level where a lot of these guys are working in is extremely competitive. And they might have one year where they're getting nothing but offers, the next year nothing. And they're just hoping that their savings are going to run them until they invest too much in the next project. So whenever you're working and developing, find interesting opportunities because there are international films where people don't have any money and they would love to do it. You can now mobily operate, so you could be in. in Iowa and sending stuff through FTP sites over long. You could score films that are happening in you know Zimbabwe or South Africa simply by sending stuff through telephone lines. So you know and the internet allows you to really reach out. So you can actually go up to lists of Craigslist on different cities and look for filmmakers looking for score and just get in touch with them through a few phone calls. You can actually start to a collaborative off you know. A and and process. Thing that, that somebody suggested once I thought was really smart was take movies or something that you like and score them. Yeah. yeah, I also would say uh, don't wait for the big chance, but start little by little and moving your music, maybe, and just putting music 